Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 42. In this video, we're going to learn about factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient of 1. So once again, we're on a topic that if you took an Algebra 1 course, you're very familiar with this. This is a very, very easy scenario to deal with. I just want to start by talking about what a trinomial is and how we're going to factor it into the product of two binomials. So I want you to recall that a trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. So as a generic example, this is a trinomial. We have ax squared plus bx plus c. So you've got a term, a term, and a term. Three terms, that gives you a trinomial. Now, in this particular case that we're going to look at today, we're going to factor this trinomial where the leading coefficient, in this case that's represented with a, is going to be a 1, and it's going to be factored into the product of two binomials. Okay, So one binomial times another binomial. Now, when we have a binomial times another binomial, we already know a shortcut for that known as FOIL, okay? So if I just use FOIL here, let's just observe a few things. You do first times first, x times x is x squared. Then the next thing I would do is the outer, x times 9 is plus 9x. Then the next thing I would do is the inner, 3 times x is plus 3x. Then the last thing I would do is the last, 3 times 9 is plus 27. Now, if I have x squared plus 9x plus 3x plus 27, I can combine like terms, and I can say this is x squared plus 9 plus 3 is 12. So the middle would be 12, and then that common variable of x, and then plus 27. So the question for today is how to go from this to this. Okay, we're going to be factoring. Remember, that's the reverse of the distributive property which is what FOIL really is. So if I'm going to go from this to this, let's just do it in reverse. I know that I would set up two sets of parentheses here. And if the leading coefficient on this is a one, well then I know that this times this gives me this. So this is gonna be x and this is gonna be x. So that's always gonna be the case. If I had y squared in this position, this would be y and this would be y. If I had z squared, z and z. If I had q squared, q and q. Okay, so the first position of each is very easy to get. Where you have to think a little bit is there's four steps to FOIL. So you need the O, the I, and the L. You've got to work that out. And the way you work that out is you need two integers here that are going to sum to this middle coefficient, the coefficient for x to the first power, and that's going to give you a product of this final constant term. So you would say you want a sum of 12 and a product of 27. And why is that the case? Well, the outer and the inner, if you remember this step, the outer was 9x, the inner was 3x. We add those together, that gives us 12x. So this, we're looking from the outer plus the inner. And then this comes from the last, 3 times 9, that gave us 27. So we're working out these three by just finding out two integers whose sum is 12 and whose product is 27. And we can see that 9 and 3 gave us the 12 in the middle, and then 9 and 3 gave us the product of 27 in the end. So if I started without knowing this information, if I just scrolled past it and said, this is what I have, if I take 27, really the only factors would be what? 1 times 27 or three times not. I can't really do anything else. So I'd have to work with three and nine, and that happens to work in this case. X plus three, and then X plus nine. So that's how you go back and forth. You just find two integers whose sum is the middle term and whose product is the final term. The first spot in each is gonna be super simple. Okay, so you just have to work out the final spot in each. So let's take a look at an example. And if you didn't understand anything that I just said, that's okay because you're going to pick this up right away. So the first thing that I tell people to do is just set up the parentheses. If you just get that set up and say, okay, well, I know if this is x squared, for my first, it would be x and then x. All I have to do now is fill in this blank and this blank. Very easy to do. Find two integers whose sum is negative 7. So I want this for the sum and whose product is 12. So I want a product of 12. 
Now, if I think about 12, if I factor it, I've got one times 12, I've got two times six, I've got three times four. Now, let me stop for a second. If I want a positive product, but a negative sum, I know that I've got to have a negative and another negative. Negative times negative is positive, negative plus negative is negative. So thinking about my two integers, I know that negative three and negative four would work perfectly. Negative three times negative four would be positive 12. Negative three plus negative four would be negative seven. So what I want here is x minus three, that quantity, times the quantity x minus four. And if you want to, you can check this with FOIL. x times x is x squared. The outer would be minus 4x. The inner would be minus 3x. You sum those, you get negative 7x. And then the last would be negative 3 times negative 4, which is 12. So you would get x squared minus 7x plus 12 back. All right, so for the next one I'm going to look at, it's x squared plus 2x minus 35. So again, I want to set up my parentheses here. And I want to just say, okay, well, I know that this times this will give me this. So I need x and x. The first position in each one is always a breeze to get. It's this position here and here that we have to do a little work for. Again, two integers that are going to sum to 2. So sum to the coefficient for that middle term. And then whose product is that constant at the end. So this is the product. All right. So two integers. We think about negative 35. If I have negative 35 as a product, one of these has to be positive, one of these has to be negative. So just think about 35 for a second. You've got one times 35, can't play with the signs and make that work. It's not divisible by two, it's not divisible by three, not divisible by four, it is divisible by five. I've got five times seven. Now I can make five and seven work, but I gotta play with the signs. The sum is positive two. So the larger absolute value needs to be positive. So if I do positive seven, and I do negative five, that will work. Positive seven plus negative five is gonna give me positive two. Positive seven times negative five is gonna give me negative 35. So what I want is the quantity x plus seven times the quantity x minus five. Let's take a look at n squared plus 12n plus 20. So again, let me just set up my parentheses here. And again, if this is n squared, then this is n and this is n. If it was q squared. This is q and this is q. So very easy to get the first position in each. Again, what we think is right here and right here. So two integers whose sum is 12. Okay, the sum is 12 and the product is 20. Now, if I think about factors of 20, I think about what? You have 1 times 20. That's not going to work. 2 times 10, that would work. 2 times 10 is 20, 2 plus 10 is 12. So n plus 2, n plus 10, right? Those two quantities. The quantity n plus 2 times the quantity n plus 10 would give you n squared plus 12, n plus 20 back. So in some cases, we're going to have a common factor involved. So 4r squared plus 20r plus 16, there's a common factor of 4 that we can pull out, and I'd be left with r squared plus 5r plus 4. And this may trip you up because if you're in this section in your textbook and all of a sudden you see a coefficient that's not one, you might say, well, I haven't gotten to that yet. And that's a more difficult scenario. But a lot of times they're going to give you these problems to where you have to factor something out first and then you can use your normal procedure. So four just stays out there. You don't need to do anything with it. Just put the parentheses like you normally would. And then just think about what's inside here. Okay, what's inside here? So I know if I have r squared, it's r and r. That's easy. Then I need two integers whose sum is 5. So a sum of 5 and a product of 4. Okay, a product of 4. So that's really easy because if you think about 4, it's really 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. That doesn't work for the sum. So I'd have to go with 1 and 4. If I do 1 times 4, that's 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. So this would be plus 1, and this would be plus 4. So I end up with 4 times the quantity r plus 1 times the quantity r plus 4. All right, let's take a look at another one like that. So we have 6p to the fourth power minus 84p cubed plus 240p squared. So obviously, if this is supposed to be a 1 here, the coefficient for the leading term, we've got to do some additional work. So I noticed that I can pull out a 6p squared from everything. 
And so what would happen is this would be p squared, then minus, this would be a 14p, then plus, this would be 40, and then we could close our parentheses. Now, all I need to do is think about factoring this guy now, and let's just set this up. So we'd have 6p squared, then set up your parentheses. Again, if I'm factoring this and p squared is the leading term, this is p and this is p. For these positions here, I just want two integers whose sum is negative 14 and whose product is 40. Now that's really easy when you think because I know that, again, if I have a positive for my product and a negative for my sum, I know I need a negative and a negative. And just think about 40. You think about four times 10. If I did negative four times negative 10, that's positive 40. If I did negative four plus negative 10, that's gonna give me negative 14. So P minus four and then P minus 10 there. So six P squared times the quantity P minus four times the quantity P minus 10. All right, so let's talk about another scenario that confuses people a lot. You might see two variables involved. So let's say you come across something like x squared plus 8xy plus 7y squared. And you go, how in the world am I going to factor that? It's actually no more difficult than what you've just been factoring. If you just set up your parentheses and you just think for a minute, we know that the first term here times the first term here will give me x squared. And that's how I have x times x. Well, if I know that this is the result of multiplying this times this, I know that that's going to come from y times y. Now, if this is set up, I just need to figure out what the coefficient of y is there and there. Because the outer and the inner will have x, y involved. So that's going to give me this right here. I just got to get the coefficient for y worked out in each case. And I do that the same way. Forget about that second variable. I don't, I don't even care about it. I've already set it up for myself. So all I need to really do is say, give me two integers whose sum is 8 and whose product, product is seven. Well, that's easy, seven's prime, so it can only be one and seven, and that works out. So put plus seven, put plus one. So you have the quantity x plus seven y times the quantity x plus one y, or just x plus y. And check that through FOIL. x times x is x squared. Your outer would be x times y, or plus x y. Your inner would be seven y times x, or plus seven x y. And your last would be 7y times y, which would be plus 7y squared. If you combine like terms here, so you'd end up with x squared plus 8xy plus 7y squared, which is exactly what you started with right there. So if you have two variables involved, don't panic. It's just as easy. Just make sure you figure this part out and this part out before you move on and figure out that sum and product part that we've been talking about for the whole lesson. All right, let's take a look at one last problem, and then we're gonna talk about prime polynomials. And I'll just give you one example of that. So we have x squared minus 12xy plus 27y squared. So again, if I see two variables involved, I'm not gonna panic. Set up your parentheses. I know that this would be x and this would be x. And if I have a y squared in the final position here, I know that came from this times this. So I'm just gonna put a y here and a y here. And then I just say, okay, well, two integers whose sum is negative 12, this is my sum, and whose product is 27. So this is my product. Super simple, okay? We think about 27. 27, I could do one times 27, or I could do three times nine. Now I've got to work out some things with the signs here because I've got a positive product and a negative sum. So that means I want a negative and another negative. Negative times negative is positive, Negative plus negative is negative. So what I can do here is say a negative three and a negative nine. Negative three times negative nine is positive 27. Negative three plus negative nine is negative 12. So I would have the quantity x minus three y times the quantity x minus nine y, okay? Super, super simple. Now, let me give you an example real quick of something that's prime. You're going to come across these polynomials that you just can't factor, okay? So let's say I had something like x squared plus 7x plus 14, and I said, go ahead and factor that for me. Well, you go ahead and start out by saying, okay, well, I can do that. x and x, that's going to be leading, and then two integers whose what? Whose sum is 7, 
whose product is 14. So this is the sum and this is the product. And this is a great example to do this because it's very easy because 14 really is what? It's only one times 14 or two times seven. Now, if I add one and 14, I get 15. That doesn't work. If I add two and seven, I get nine. So that doesn't work. So there's no configuration that would work. And because this is positive and this is positive, I know the signs for the integers have to be positive. So really I'm out of options here and I've got to stop and say, well, this polynomial is prime. This is prime. And using rational numbers, I will not be able to factor this.